This video is about building relationships with wholesalers and distributors and understanding the process of submitting purchase orders or POs to these wholesalers and distributors so you're navigating the system correctly so you're not coming off as uneducated in the industry that you're in so you have a better chance of opening more accounts. Hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to watch our other videos and smash that subscribe button. Stay lit. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Amazon Lit YouTube channel. If this is your first time joining us, make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. So when we post a video, you get notified and you're the first to know because we drop some gems on this channel. We talk a lot about building and growing a business. And now our specific business, the niche that we're in is Amazon and e-commerce, but the topics discussed on this channel hold true to all businesses because we talk about building relationships, employing people, business development, personal development, managing finances, the ins and outs of how to run a successful business. We're crushing it on amazon.com. So something that I've been getting a lot of questions about from you is opening accounts with wholesalers and distributors. And there's some great questions everybody's asking, but I think before we even get into opening accounts with wholesalers and distributors, we gotta get into the do's and don'ts of what to do when dealing with a wholesaler and distributor. And some of the questions that may come up when you're opening these accounts so you know exactly how to navigate and place that first order and submit that PO, which is a purchase order, so you can get that order processed and the products can get shipped to your fulfillment center or your home or your warehouse or your storage facility, your basement, wherever you're operating out of, so they can get shipped to you and you could actually process them to send them to Amazon. So first things first, you gotta open accounts with wholesalers and distributors, right? You gotta make the phone calls, you gotta get yourself out there, you got to go to trade shows, whatever it is, whatever you got to do to, to open accounts between phone calls, emails, Google searches, and trade shows. Those are the four techniques we use to find all our distributors, and it's worked out very well for us. And, and we've been able to grow those relationships with the distributors we currently have and really take off with growing our market and growing our product spread so we can access a larger consumer base. So let's say hypothetically, right? You're at the point now where you have built a relationship or are in the process of building a relationship with a distributor. You've reached out, set up an account. They sent you the account application, possibly a credit check. You filled it all out. They reviewed it. They approved your account. And now they just blasted you an Excel file of their catalog. Some Excel file catalogs have up to 15, 20,000 products on them, which may seem very overwhelming. You might be looking at this thing like, how am I ever going to get through this? And when we started selling on Amazon six years ago, there were no UPC scrapers or software out there to help analyze these lists. We did it all manually. But fortunately for everybody out there today, you no longer have to do it as manual as we had to do it six years ago, but that's not to say that you still don't have to put manual labor in when going through these lists, because there's a lot of missed opportunities. I even see it with our buying team on a regular basis. They miss a lot of opportunities by just going off the output of the scraped file when they upload a UPC to a UPC scraper and they're not digging deeper into those products. So it's important to dig deeper into those products. So now you got the catalog from the distributor. You're super excited. You start going through it. There's probably going to be four to six columns in the catalog. There's going to be an item number which is going to be a unique number that the distributor itself uses to track inventory within its fulfillment system, within its warehouse. And it, it's used to reorder products, order products, transfer products to different facilities. It's so when they scan that product, they know exactly how many they have, what the price they got it at. It's a way for them, it's essentially a license plate for the company, that is the item number. And then you'll probably have a description which is going to describe the product. So I got a product right here. It looks like it is clear still. So let's say for example, this product in the, in the catalog is 1234 is their item number. 
and the description would be clear sill daily clear acne treatment cream right and that's just something so they can better understand what that inventory is because if you just had a product code or an item id for the company it could get a little confusing when you're picking that product it's nice to have a description i know in our warehouse sometimes it's nice to have a description because sometimes the product number might be off by one or two it's just good to have a description and then another column you're going to have is a price right what are they selling the product at and probably next to that column next to the price column there'll be a column that has either case pack or it'll be a column that says H's or CS, so EA or CS. And what that EA or CS means is that the price in the column to the left of the EA or CS column is priced at either H's, EA, or case, CS. So what you would do if the product is priced at H's, you'd have to look at the case pack column, which would be the fifth column over. And let's say this product, um, it comes this product comes 24 units in a case. So the case pack for this product would be 24. So the case pack means that you have to buy, most companies, not all companies, but most companies, you have to buy a full case of this product. Right, so you have to buy 24 of them. So if the, the price in the catalog is priced at each EA, and the case pack is 24, you have to spend at minimum if the product costs two dollars at minimum forty eight dollars to purchase this product because the least you can buy is one case of this clear sill acne treatment cream that's the minimum you can purchase is one case because it's case pack in 24 units so the minimum you can purchase is one case and i can't listen we also operate a wholesale business so one of the reasons why this video is being posted is because i get a ton of questions and a ton of po submitted purchase order submitted where someone wants 16 of let's say this product 16 they want 16 of this product it means i'd have to open this box they come in sleeves of six so i have to open one of these sleeves take four units out and ship two full sleeves and four single units to whoever ordered that product. And then I would have eight units left over. From a wholesaler distributor standpoint, that's not very organized. That's not very good way to track inventory. It allows for damaged units, lost units, missing units. It's just not good. So it's important when you're placing these orders to understand what these columns are. Item code, description, price, each is or case case pack and then they should definitely have another column upcs so upcs are universal product codes now upcs can be found on any product that's manufactured all over the world some of them look a little different and i'm going to post an entire different youtube video to go really deep into upcs and gtins and ean so you can get a better understanding of those but upcs which is a universal product code it's a 12 digit code that's primarily used in north america to track a product when it's sold or reordered through the supply chain so what we like to do is plug that upc into amazon.com so we can gather information on what listings are being sold that match this product now will all the listings that are being sold that match this product show up when i type in this upc the answer is absolutely not will some of them show possibly will all of them show definitely not well any of them show maybe not maybe someone recreated this product as a they sold it as a six pack so they created an entirely new upc and now if you were to look up just this upc on amazon you'd be missing out on that six pack so the reason why I think it's important to understand these things is because when you're emailing a wholesaler or distributor, the last thing you wanna come off as is unintelligent or unaware of your surroundings and your business. Because then that's a good sign that you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about or what you're doing. And that's a great reason for the wholesaler
wholesale or distributor to not finalize and finish off that order. And you might email them two or three times and wonder why they didn't respond. And most likely it's because your order was just submitted so incorrectly and just so many errors, pricing errors, case pack errors, quantity errors, that they don't even want to consider it anymore. You know, I get it all the time. Fortunately, when you're dealing with a wholesale company like us, Avid Wholesale Group, uh, we understand what it's like to be a new e-commerce seller and how challenging that can be. So I have no problem shooting an email like, hey, your case pack quantities didn't ma match the case packs. Please resubmit the order with the proper multiples of 24 or 12, whatever the case pack is. And on the first order, you should not be negotiating prices. It's just a standard. It's growing a business is all about relationship building and and it's just to, to request a lot of the orders I get be like 40% discount you know product selling we're selling it for four dollars they're gonna ask 220 that's it's it's pretty ridiculous it's pretty ridiculous to ask for something that's discounted that much like let's be realistic you know I'd be like someone making you an eBay offer for 40% off of what you're listing it at. And I'm sure a lot of you get those eBay offers and you probably laugh at them because they're insulting and they're funny. And it's like, is this guy even serious? So I think the same thing when I receive um, a purchase order from a potential client who has all the pricing at 40% off. I, I, I laugh and I'm like, is this guy serious? Is this girl serious? Like, absolutely not. This can't even happen. And what I do is I email him back and say, this is way too aggressive. You're going way too aggressive, especially on a first order. Like first order, when we place a first order, we don't negotiate any pricing. I'm taking it as is. Right? I don't care if I'm making 8% margins on it. I just want the product. I want to build and harvest the relationship because it's more about the relationship than it is the profits in the beginning. Obviously the long game, it's about the, the incoming money, the net profits, but the short game you got to play with these wholesalers and distributors is relationship building, right? Which turns into the long game and long-term relationships mean better pricing. So when you're submitting a PO or a purchase order, the distributor, wholesaler, brand, manufacturer probably has some requirements for you to submit that PO. So I know the requirements for our company, there's a $1,500 minimum order quantity, right? So that's $1,500 of assorted SKUs. As long as they're full case packs, you could get 20 SKUs, you could get 50 SKUs, you could get one SKU, but it has to meet $1,500 and that $1,500 minimum order quantity is after removals from out of stocks or prices that you you just can't get with so for example let's say you submit a $1,500 order exactly but on two of the products you requested 10% off and I, I looked at them and I said there's there's no way or the wholesaler looked at them and said there's no way I can do 10% off on this product there's just I can't so I submit back the edited purchase order with the pricing that we can meet and you realize okay uh, he didn't accept the 10% off on these two products I want to remove them well now removing those quantities because your purchase order was at exactly $1,500 removing those quantities now brings your purchase order to less than $1,500 so it no longer meets the minimum order quantity so you have to add something to that order in order for that order to be placed. Wholesalers and distributors and brands and manufacturers, they have minimum order quantities because it takes a lot of work to not only go through that order for pricing, submit the order, send it to the warehouse, then the warehouse has to pick that order, package that order, pallet wrap that order, or put it in UPS boxes, whatever your requirements are. And then we have to ship that order out. So there's a lot of work in there. That's why distributors and wholesalers, manufacturers and brands have those minimum order quantities set in place. So when you're placing these orders, be mindful of those minimum order quantities. And also subsequently, when you're placing an order, our requirement and a lot of wholesalers and distributors requirement, there has to be some sort of identifier that allows the wholesaler or distributor to know what product you're purchasing. So for us, it's a UPC and an item number. We request to have all purchase orders submitted with UPC, item number, quantity requested, so how many units you wanna purchase, and don't forget to make sure those units are divisible by the case pack, the price you're requesting it at, and also a description. So that's 
five different things. So we request five different things which are all in our catalog. And I know we deal with some wholesalers and distributors which only want three things. They just want the item number, how many quantity we're ordering, and the price we're requesting. Other distributors want you know, their item number, the UPC, the description, the case pack. They want the units. They want the price requested. They want six things. But it all depends on what the wholesaler or distributor wants. Whatever they want, you got to do it because nothing's more frustrated than when you get an order and it's just it's just quantities and descriptions you know and if you made one letter off on that description or you're missing the tail end of that description that could mean I'm going to submit a, a final invoice or a pro forma for you for a completely different product because we might have two of the very similar products one could be a Vaseline 16 ounce and the other is a Vaseline 8 ounce but because if you only put Vaseline I have no idea which Vaseline you're talking about so it's important just to know these things they're kind of the basics of building relationships with wholesalers and distributors distributors because the end game for the relationship is get on a level where you're ordering so much inventory and you're spending so much money with this wholesaler or distributor manufacturer or brand where they're actually getting deals that come in and you're the first person that they call right so if they get 50 pallets of a great product and they're offering it at 60% off for the next week because they need to move inventory you want to be on speed dial for them you want to be that number they call and they're like hey Listen, we just got 50 pallets in. We got to unload them. Can you take 10 of these pallets? And you're going to look at the numbers and be like, yeah, I can, I can, I can take eight of them. And they're going to be like, wow, that's great. Thank you so much. I owe you one. Right. And then it's like a, a take, give, take, give, and then gain relationship. Right. Because you took a little on this deal with the eight pallets. You gave a little on the first couple orders where you didn't request lower pricing. And then you might give a little, take it a product where you're not making a lot of money on, but you take it anyway for the relationship. Take a little with the, the next deal. And it's like take, give, take, give, and then gain. It's, it's just revolutionary the way something like that operates when you start building relationships and the deals you come across you know we didn't so I, sebastian and humble ted didn't start paying themselves till you know almost two years in they didn't take a penny out of the business because they were reinvesting it and margins were low in the beginning margins were low but the focus was building a business building a large business and that's exactly what we did you know, we have over 150,000 trusted customer reviews on Amazon, and that's because the long goal was build a business, a successful business. That's enough information, I think, for you to get started on placing orders with wholesalers and distributors, understanding how to navigate their catalogs, understanding the terminology that they're using, understanding how to submit that PO or purchase order, understanding how to deal with them and negotiate pricing, and keeping in mind that it's, it's all about the relationship. So don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, we're all over the place. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are appreciated. Stay motivated, stay grateful, stay getting it, and stay lit. Have a great day.